Oh, so this is a fragrance that has gotten a lot of hype lately. And it's by Bath & Body Works of all places. <laughs> so I've seen a few videos and I said, I gotta see if it's true. And I actually smelled this on a coworker who has a bunch of Bath & Body Works fragrances. And it was amazing. I thought he was wearing this one Latafa fragrance that he always wears. So I said, what is it? Are you wearing that Latafa again? He goes, no, I'm wearing Bath & Body Works. I said, there's no way you're wearing Bath & Body Works, not with that smell. And he told me what it was, coffee and whiskey. I've seen several people cover it. I went to Bath & Body Works last weekend. They had the buy three, get three free like they always do. So I ended up purchasing six fragrances along with like a dozen candles because they had $10 off three wick candles. But in any case, this fragrance is amazing. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. So make sure to stay tuned. today's episode and I tell you all about coffee and whiskey cologne by Bath & Body Works and I also tell you why I think this fragrance is so good, what it smells like, can I compare it to any other niche fragrances out there because I do think this one is quote unquote niche quality. I want to start things off by saying that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you took something of value from today's episode. It would really mean a lot to me. So when you read the description on the back of this box, right? It says, warm fragrance with a hint of sweetness inspired by the classic combination of coffee and bold Irish whiskey. So as far as I know, these are the two ingredients in here that they're really sort of spotlighting but there's so much more happening in here. I get vanilla, I get caramel, I get this creamy sort of hazelnut goodness about it that, you know, even when it comes to the coffee, it doesn't smell like a black coffee, it doesn't smell like a coffee bean or coffee grounds or something like that. It smells like a very sweet coffee-based drink that you would order from like a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. And I think it's precisely that combination of the sweetness and the coffee but also that boozy spiciness that you get in here from the Irish whiskey that gives it that spicy yet creamy texture, kind of reminiscent of like a Bailey's, right? Like an Irish cream. In any case, I'm so excited to give you my thoughts on the smell. Let's take a very quick look at the presentation. Now, right in the opening of this fragrance, I was wowed. Not in terms of, you know, the uniqueness of it and wow, this is the first time I've ever smelled something like this and it's so great and blah, blah, blah. No, that's not why. I'm wowed because Bath & Body Works put their best foot forward and they said, we're gonna release something this autumn slash winter that might be a little bit on the unconventional side, something with actual decent longevity and something that smells amazing and they did it right i know they have another one that i bought called leather and brandy i think it's far off in the distance there i'm going to review that one next but this one is awesome for the price that you're going to pay was what 40 bucks 39.50 right and you can buy three get three free and that's exactly what i did so i spent 120 bucks for six fragrances. So that basically slashed the price of this one down to about 20 bucks, if you wanna look at it from that angle. Um, but this one is awesome, this smell. So it opens up with this creamy rich sweetness that kind of gives hints of caramel and vanilla and it's so delightfully gourmand and it's not something that you've smelled on the designer side of things either. I feel like so many fragrances nowadays really just, you know, put all of the emphasis on the tonka bean. That's not happening here, which is great. 
I think a lot of brands also kind of twist that um, Emporio Armani Stronger With You DNA. That's not happening here either. And even when it comes to the Gourmand fragrances, they're so extroverted and so quirky, like an Angel Men by Thierry Mugler. You're not getting that either. You're gonna get something more along the lines of like, although it doesn't smell similar to it, but I think in terms of uniqueness, in terms of character and personality, something like a pure malt by Thierry Mugler, all right? So not the original Amen, but pure malt. If you can imagine that boozy, sweet sensation that you get from pure malt, that's what you can expect from this fragrance too, especially, it, you know, with the exception of it having the coffee in here. Now, of course, they also have pure coffee <laughs> by Thierry Mugler, but this one actually smells a little closer to pure malt, but doesn't smell 100% like any of those fragrances, right? Definitely does its own thing. Now, as you give this one a chance to dry down, the coffee starts to come through, but not in a freshly brewed pot of black coffee kind of a way, right? It's just subtle accents that um, really complement more than they do overtake the sweetness of the fragrance. So I feel like the sweetness is primary, the coffee is secondary. And in terms of the spices that are used in here, I get sweet spices more than anything, right? So maybe a little cinnamon, maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of star anise or something like that. But that's kind of what's giving this whiskey component. This fragrance doesn't smell overly boozy to me, and that could be a critique that some people might apply to this fragrance that maybe reading the back and, you know, it says in bold Irish whiskey, maybe they were expecting it to be a little bit more on the boozy side of things. I'm not getting that necessarily. I think leather and brandy has more of that brandy vibe going on than this one does with the whiskey. But nevertheless, that gourmand, creamy, rich coffee sensation it's just very, very well done. I am very impressed with this fragrance. I mean, honestly speaking, if you like fragrances like, you know, The Embrace by Navitus Parfum 1270 by Frappon, Dulce Diablo by Narcotica, if you like those kind of boozy, sweet, sometimes spicy gourmand fragrances, perfect for the colder weather, try this fragrance. This fragrance is very good. I'm glad I purchased it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, like I said, you know, it seems like it wouldn't be that unique because I've smelled sweet coffee fragrances before, but no, it is unique, right? And I'm very impressed with the quality here. In terms of the overall smell, it's actually very pleasant, despite the fact that it's a little bit more on the daring or experimental side of things. It's still very pleasant, very mass appealing. It's not ultra daring, I just don't think that that would be in Bath and Body Works' nature to release something very challenging that pushes the envelope. You're not gonna get that from Bath and Body Works. In terms of the longevity, I got about six hours from this, so it wasn't superb, but it was definitely a lot better than some of their other fragrances. And even on my coworker, right? He'll put it on, I think at like 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, right around 1 or 2 p.m. when we're pretty much wrapping our things up and getting ready to leave, I could still smell it on him. So this one does have really good longevity. Projection was great for the first half hour of application. It did radiate within an arm's length. It became an elbows length scent right around that three and a half to four hour mark. Right around that six hour mark, it became a skin scent. In terms of the versatility, I think it's perfectly unisex, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it leans as masculine as some other fragrances from the catalog, like Ocean or Noir or even Graphite. I know I reviewed Bourbon as well. I've reviewed a lot of Bath & Body Works fragrances, but I think this one is fairly unisex in my opinion. This is great for the colder weather just because a, a lot of the ingredients, that ambery vanilla with the coffee, really brings forth images of the colder weather. And I do think this will appeal to somebody who's a little bit younger on account of the sweetness. And you can wear this one casually or formally. And in terms of the presentation, I do like the more squarish look to the bottles. I think it gives a very classy, chic, urbane quality to the fragrance. And I do like the color duality between the beige and the brown on the box. I think it also does a pretty good job at conveying what you can expect in terms of the smell. My final verdict on this fragrance is, it's awesome. Uh, is it one of the best fragrances that Bath & Body Works has put out? I think it is. And I think for this, we really have to honor 
the uniqueness of the fragrance. I think in the past, Bath & Body Works has sort of put out their own version of Invictus, their own version of Aventus, their own version of Aqua de Jo, and all of these popular fragrances. Here we have something that in my opinion is unique, affordable, decently long lasting, and smells awesome. Hope you have a chance to try it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, click where it says enable all notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you, if you enjoyed it or if you liked it. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.